Serafimi mnongo ochiti is the only phrase in history to ever authentically use this letter, the so-called multiocular O. The phrase, translated from Old Church Slavonic, which is the first Slavic literary language, fittingly means many-eyed seraphim, as the letter resembles a bunch of eyes stuck together and appears in a single manuscript from the Book of Psalms in 1429. It is not, however, the only one of its kind. It seems that Old Church Slavonic speakers had an obsession with depicting eyes through glyphs. There is a monocular variant used in certain words like oko, a binocular variant used to form ochi, which is the dual form of oko, and a double monocular version, and so many others. But what really is the multiocular O? A hapax legomenon is used to denote a term of which only one instance of its use is recorded, either in a particular corpus, like a given book, or in history, like with the case of the multiocular O, though of course barring any metalinguistic exceptions like this exact video where we're just talking about it rather than actually using it. And as it turns out, while it may sound like these terms are pretty rare, about 44% of the words in the novel Moby Dick by Herman Melville are hapax legomena, which is the plural. And this is no coincidence. The first half of the 20th century saw the work of George Kingsley Ziff, an American linguist who enjoyed studying statistical occurrences in different languages, but who somehow wasn't especially fond of mathematics. In 1932, he observed an interesting pattern, and while he wasn't the first to do so, the pattern would eventually take his name. He found that in any given large body of language, so a long book for example, not something shorter like a paragraph, the most frequent word will occur approximately twice as often as the second most frequent word, which occurs twice as often as the fourth most frequent word, etc. There's a pretty way of putting it mathematically, which is that the nth most frequent word is proportional to 1 over n. Let's go back to Moby Dick. The most common word is the, which is to be expected since it's also the most common word in the English language, which is followed by a few words that deviate from the pattern a little bit given their ubiquity in the language. After that though, it becomes almost a perfectly straight line when plotted on a log-log graph, or a graph that uses logarithmic scales on both its horizontal and vertical axes. For reference, the red line all the way at the bottom represents the amount of words that are hapax legomena as we talked about, a frequency of one each. A study by Shui Yanyu, Chun Chuan Shu, and Hai Tao Liu shows that Ziff's law holds for the 50 languages used in their corpus, along with demonstrating that any given Ziff's law graph has a three-segment structural pattern, so basically three parts to the diagram, which you might have discerned earlier. There's the sort of wobbly top part, rigid middle part, and trailing bottom part with all the hapax legomena. Additionally, Ziff's law applies even to fields beyond corpus linguistics. Machine learning engineer Deval Shaw writes on his Medium page about a Python script he wrote to run through random text corpuses on the internet and check for the pattern. Among other things, like the second debate between these two presidential candidates, he links a photo that shows how Ziff's law even holds for the number of Facebook likes given to each NBA team ranked in order of popularity. But this should come as no surprise when the law holds for ancient languages, Kepler's third law, the size of cloud areas and perimeters as viewed from space, the diameters of dust devils on Mars, the frequency spectrum for pink noise, city populations, the Stefan Boltzmann law, and just so much more. And the crazy part? Nobody truly knows why this happens. There's a bunch of ideas that regularly float around, for example, one that actually Ziff himself proposed, is that it could have to do with the principle of least effort, the broadest theory that animals will naturally choose the path of least resistance or effort, and the idea would basically be, why use a lot word when few word do trick? In a given conversation, he reasonably proposes that, in general, neither speakers nor listeners want to work any harder than necessary to reach understanding, and this desire for common intelligibility is what leads to the observed Ziff's distribution, where uncommon words aren't often used in favor of more understandable ones. Another explanation has to do with the probabilistic randomness of language. If English has 26 letters and we add one to denote the equivalent of a spacebar to simulate the likelihood of creating a new word, we end up with shorter words being more common than longer words in a pattern that follows Ziff's law. However, this, for one, implies that humans create words completely randomly, which isn't true, and secondly, fails to account for the inevitably uncommon words that happen to be very short. A mel, for example, is a three-letter psychoacoustic term denoting a unit of pitch on a scale of pitches perceived by listeners to be equally spaced from one another. This is not a word you'll use every day. But what are words, really? It seems obvious, but it really isn't once you start digging into it. I'd be getting carried away here, but I'm planning on investigating polysynthesis in a future video because I've never really liked the term, but that's a topic for another day.
Going back to the multiocular O for some final trivia, if you noticed, the symbol I have here, which is the original Unicode version of the glyph, actually features the wrong number of eyes. It's not until 2022 that Unicode version 15.0 featured a version with all 10 eyes, but most fonts in my experience have not reflected this change. Anyway, that's about it. In some news, my first studio album, titled Dreambound, is finally out on all platforms. It's a concept album about a series of dreams I had last year, so each song builds off of the last, and is sung mostly in my call lengths, actually. So yeah, I had a lot of fun making this, and I hope the story resonates with you guys. And that's about it. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.